Okay, so we are going to start on chapter 15 today. We are going to go over evolution and some aspects of evolution. So I know you guys have seen this picture before, uh, and we've seen this picture with a relationship to Charles Darwin and his thoughts on evolution. So obviously we're not evolving into Darth Vader, but with this picture, guys, we have a monkey, and it says that the monkey evolved into a human over time, and we got some weapons here, and they became more advanced. But did this actually happen? Well, we'll talk about that a little bit today. But before we go over that, I'm going to go do a little history of Charles Darwin. Now, Charles Darwin was originally uh, going to college to be a physician like his father. However, uh, he decided to drop out of becoming a doctor and actually studied theology instead. So he was trying to become a uh, religious person. And while he was in school, he was able to go to the Galapagos Islands. And you guys can see right here, it's off the west coast of South America. So obviously we're up here. It's a little bit closer to the equator. So there's a lot more uh, organisms, a lot more different species down there than we have where we're located. So we noticed that on these islands, the animals looked similar, but they have different traits. When we're talking about traits, it's like adaptations, things that are different, things that help one person survive and reproduce, and another adaptation that might not be as favorable as the one that the other person has. So on the Galapagos Islands, there are Galapagos tortoises, and this is actually the only place we will find Galapagos tortoises. They're huge. They're gigantic. But the neat thing is with the Galapagos uh, tortoise is uh, Darwin, when he was looking at them, he noticed that on the different islands, their shell actually had a different pattern to them. So they shared a lot of the same DNA, but the shell was a little bit different. So they were starting to evolve. They were starting to change some of their adaptations based on the island they lived on. So his goal was to somehow prove that organisms changed over time. In other words, prove evolution, even though Darwin never used the word evolution. Previous people to Darwin actually said, oh yes, evolution does exist, but no one was able to prove it. And that was Darwin's goal. So here is a nice camouflaged frog in there. You could see it uh, blends in pretty well to its environment. And this is an adaptation for this frog. Now, other frogs, like this poison dart frog here, have different adaptations. And you guys can see, they are not going to blend in very well with their environment. And they're called poison dart frogs because back in the day, um, people used to dip their darts in the frog's poison and then use a blow gun and shoot people with the poison darts. Um, now, most of these won't kill you, the poison dart frogs, but some of them, like the golden one, uh, yeah, that, that'll kill you. So our definition of evolution, guys, is a modification of what we already have that is going to uh, increase our ability to survive and reproduce. In other words, we're changing over time. So things are going to be different from you and other people. And humans are a bad example with this, guys. If we go more to the animal kingdom and excluding humans, things will be a little bit easier to understand. For instance, if we have lions, maybe one lion is faster than another lion. Obviously, the one that is faster is going to be able to eat more. It's going to survive longer. It's going to reproduce more. But the slower lion, yeah, it, it's not going to do that. It's going to be slower. It's not going to get as much food. It's not going to reproduce as much. It's not going to survive as long. So here is, just to give you guys a little bit of a review, here is a guy who has obviously hair on his face in an excessive amount. So this is actually a uh, certain type of genetic disorder where he has... Um, a dominant allele for excessive hair on his face on his X chromosome. If you remember, we went over like sex-linked inheritance and that in the past, but he would pass this gene on to any of his daughters 
but not to his sons because he would be giving the sons the wine as trays carried by the ex. But anyway, if he lived in a really hot climate, this would probably be a really bad adaptation. But if he lived in a cool or a cold climate, this would probably be a good adaptation because it keeps his face warm. So before Darwin came out with his theory of survival of the fittest and uh, change over time, Darwin, like I said, didn't really use evolution, but he um, was talking to a lot of people during that age and the people actually thought that the earth was only a few thousand years old. To be specific, they thought it was about 6,000 years old. And Darwin thought it was much older than this. Even after Darwin, people did not believe him, so they still thought it was only a few thousand years old. Here is Pangaea. So this was before we had all the continents separate. Um, so all the tectonic and oceanic plates underneath started to move around and we started to have our continents. Now, as we had our continents move, we were able to actually find a lot of the fossils. And how we find fossils, guys, is in something called rock strata. When we have a rock formation like this one here, you guys can see there's a bunch of different layers of this rock. Now, some of these rock will help be held together by you know pressure, heat, some of them will also have, again, still pressure, heat, but some of them will have actually prokaryotes to come and fuse the rocks together. But what I want to go over here, guys, is the lower rock would be the oldest rock, and the higher rock here would be the youngest rock, or the most recently formed rock. Here's another good picture of strata you guys can see um, there. So if we were looking at this cake, which looks delicious. Um, the purple down below would be our oldest layer and the red would be our youngest layer. So if we looked here, obviously I did put these out of order, but because it can happen. Um, our mammoth down here is in the lowest rock strata. He would be the oldest or you know, past um, longest ago extinct, I guess we could say, organism out of these three. So it would be, he'd be the oldest, and this guy over here would be the second oldest, and the T-Rex would be the youngest because he's toward the top. Now in reality, guys, yeah, the, the mammoth here was probably around like, I don't know, six to two million years ago, somewhere around there. Dinosaurs almost 70 million years ago, okay, like 65 to 70 million years ago. That's when the dinosaurs were around. So we would have to flip these two, but you guys can see that even just comparing them, maybe they're not you know perfect maybe something happened in this rock strata to push the mammoth down more this is why uh, sometimes it's good to do different types of dating instead of just like comparing where the fossils are at we might use different isotopes and different um, elements we'll find in the rocks around it to determine how old those fossils actually are so cuvier he started to study all these different fossils. And he noticed that as he gets into deeper strata, that the fossils and the organisms that the fossils were differed greatly than the ones that are around today. Here is the geologic time scale here. Um, you guys can see, I mean, back here we have a gigantic extinction. We think that was caused by a uh, gigantic shift in temperature. This one up here, right after the dinosaurs, we think this one was a meteorite. And I know you guys have probably heard like, oh, we think it's a meteorite, but it could have been something else. No, it was probably some kind of gigantic meteorite. Why we think it was a gigantic meteorite, even bigger than the one in this picture here, was because we uh, studied the fossils in that area around it, and we found large amounts of iridium. And that iridium, uh, is only pretty much found on meteorites in that high concentration. So that's what we were thinking there. But anyway, so Cuvier, going back to him, he found that when we were going to these low layers of strata, we were finding organisms that weren't around today. So he said, okay, they're, they're probably extinct if we're not finding them. He also said that there are catastrophes where we can have these large extinctions. And also catastrophes will stir up our 
fossils a little bit too. If we have an earthquake, things will get stirred up a little bit as well. Now, I don't like this term, okay? Uh, but Darwin used Charles Lyell's um, idea of uniformitarianism to sculpt his idea for evolution. When you think of uniformed, you think of things as staying the same. So what Lau said is Earth's surface is constantly changing. Okay, wait, uniform means the same, and we just said that it's constantly changing. He meant it's changing at a consistent rate, all right? So this is no copy. And a big thing, as I showed you at the beginning, was that people say that Darwin said that we came from monkeys, and we did not. This is no copy. And no copy, you guys can see it has a zebra backside, and the front side looks kind of like a giraffe. You guys can see the ears and these little things, these little projections going upward, just like a giraffe. Okay, there's the projections, there's the ears. You guys can see that the placement is very similar. Uh, this also kind of looks like it was, was mixed with a cow, but you would think that, okay, maybe that okapi species came from a giraffe and a zebra mating. It didn't, no. In reality, it didn't come from anything related to uh, the giraffe as we know it today and the zebra as we know it today. Rather, we share, or I should say the giraffes, share a common ancestor with the okapi. So we had some kind of ancestor and we diverged into giraffes, into zebras, and into okapis. So let's relate that to humans. We had humans now, and we're saying that we came from monkeys. No, that's not the case. Rather, here's what happened. There was some kind of organism that was a human monkey looking thing. And we speciated. In other words, we went through a uh, divergent evolution where that species became extinct, that monkey-human species, and it gave rise to monkeys, and at the same time, it gave rise to humans on the opposite side. So humans and monkeys came around at the, about the same time from a common ancestor. That does not mean we came from monkeys. Okay? You guys can see um, there's a giraffe there. Okay? They're about 14 feet high nowadays. All right. If you ever feed them, as you can see in this picture, there's a nice little deck um, that they can come up and be, be right by you. But the next guy, his name is Lamarck. Now, here's what Lamarck said. All right. So here's your little Kobe gif. But Lamarck said, okay, I got a person who's four foot ten and they want to play basketball. If they reach up high every day and walk around like this every single day, they will get bigger. They just got to try really hard, all right? Now, does that actually happen? We know it does not. Lamarck believed in inheritance of acquired characteristics. Acquired. You were acquiring something throughout your life. If you are acquiring something throughout your life, you're gaining it somehow. This is why he thought, hey, I'm gonna get real tall. Doesn't work like that, okay? So why he thought this is back in the day when he was studying his fossils, he found giraffes with long necks that were about 14 feet high and he found one with short necks that were a good bit smaller than the long neck giraffes. So what he was thinking was, okay, well the short neck giraffes couldn't get food so they stretched their necks up as high as they could. And one day they were able to get food. It really didn't happen like that, okay? In reality, what happened was the short neck giraffes were unable to get food. And in being unable to get food, they, uh, okay, here's Mario. I don't know why Mario's coming in, but he is. No, he was trying to save the short neck giraffes. He couldn't. The Grim Reaper took the short neck giraffes. They died because they couldn't get food. In dying, they weren't able to pass their genes along to the next generation. And the only genes that got passed on are the ones from the long neck giraffes that were able to get food. So Lamarck's idea was rejected because we were studying all these different things of inheritance and we found that no, they can't just 
stretch up and, and get bigger over time, okay? So we got Baby Yoda here bringing the rejected sign in. But you guys get that Lamarck's theory of evolution was not correct. And what we did was Darwin then took his ideas and actually changed them by going to the Galapagos Islands and uh, he found all these different species and all these different uh, characteristics or adaptations on the species and he found that the most fit ones are going to survive and reproduce and the ones not so fit are going to um, die. So we'll talk about the elephants a little bit next time. These are African elephants. These are Asian elephants here. You guys can see those different adaptations with them. Okay, so we'll stop here for the day, guys. Um, and we'll go over a little bit more with Darwin and evolution next time. So just so you guys know, okay, Lamarck's big thing, he was incorrect with it. Uh, he, we do not acquire traits throughout our, our lifetime. The only thing Lamarck was correct about, though, was that we do have differing traits in other people. So there is something different between you and someone else. You have different adaptations. Um, but the rest of it, he was wrong with that you could change those adaptations and make them into beneficial adaptations. All right, guys, have a good rest of your day.